All right, we're here with uh, Mr. David Hansley from J.P. Morgan, and this time I want to get it right. You're the uh, executive executive Re director director for mm. research, right. economics research, cool. right? And uh, thank you so much for coming to our studios. Thank you. Um, sir. Let's start with U.S. equities and how and where do you want to see, or where are you going to see them in 2012? Well, we're looking for an <clears throat> up year, um, contingent on. Uh, some of the uncertainties resolving that we're looking at right now in the U.S. and global economies, but mm -hmm. uh, a good gain because we're we're thinking that uh, at least right now that 2012 would be a decent year for the global and for U.S. growth. Hmm. You're more hopeful, so it's going to be a better year than 2011. Dependent on some some positive outcomes. I mean, the, the number one thing is to see uh, conditions stabilize in Europe. Uh, secondly, and we have much more confidence about this, we're looking for the stimulus that was in place in uh, 2011 mm -hmm. from the U.S. federal government to be extended for 2012, in which case um, the drag from the fiscal side would be manageable and uh, the private sector we're seeing uh, come on toward the end of the year uh, rejuvenated. We would look for that to carry through into 2012 and produce a, a year of good growth, not strong growth. Hmm. Um, you mentioned the uh, concerns about the EU and uh, you know that sort of that crisis. Is this going to be resolved? Do you believe that it's going to be better in 2012? We're assuming that the worst is behind us and that policymakers slowly are moving to contain uh, the crisis. I think that's at this point, frankly, an optimistic assumption based on uh, what we're seeing just this week, where um, after the summit. A number of the key measures that were uh, talked about to um, contain the stress uh, are being challenged. Mm -hmm. um, but provided that policymakers do ultimately move in a constructive way and uh, limit the damage uh, from this point forward mm -hmm. to confidence in markets, then I think the way is clear for 2012 to be a year of, of you know, moderate global growth, not strong growth, but mm. moderate global growth and, and per perhaps better than 2011 was. I see that you're very hopeful and positive on the European side. How about the U.S. side? You talked the second condition you gave us is the Fed or the stimulus. And there's a rumor that in 2012, especially in the first quarter, there's, we're going to see about a half trillion dollar asset purchases. Do you agree with this assumption? We are not looking for the Fed to do uh, additional Stimulus. asset purchases okay. or quantitative easing because we feel like the economy will grow enough to keep the Fed on the sidelines as far as QE goes. Mm. We are looking for the Fed to roll out a new initiative on communications in January where they would build on really a multi-year uh, effort to become more, uh, that's been aimed at being more transparent about mm -hmm. the way policy is made and give more explicit guidance about uh, the funds rate as well as other macro performance variables. Um, all signs seem to be pointing to that initiative being unveiled in January. Um, January? January is interesting. Is that because the whole cash members are going to be replaced with the new ones? Is that why? That's not the reason for expecting it January. Okay. Rather, they just seem to be building momentum toward doing something because okay. the economy has not been doing that well. Hmm. But uh, rather than doing additional QE, uh, the first order of business seems to be uh, seeing what more they can gain from uh, communication strategy. So they're going to give, we think, more explicit guidance about the funds rate trajectory than they have so far, which already has been extraordinary because they've gradually moved to uh, giving guidance that they thought the funds rate would be uh, maintained at the current rate through the middle or latter part of 2013. Hmm. Uh, building on that, they may issue explicit projections for the funds rate that go along with their uh, targets, not targets, but their uh, forecasts for unemployment and GDP and inflation, what policy rate would be consistent with that. And the idea hopefully being that not only that the markets would understand better how the Fed is formulating policy, but uh, this might cause markets to discount zero rates for even longer than they are right now. Mm, I see. And we were talking about Fed and uh, target uh, rates. Um, at one point, Fed talked about 2.75%. If the economy underperforms, can, can we go below that? What, what is your projection for next year's U.S. economy? We, right now, are looking for growth uh, Q4, Q4, near two. Um, but we are not assuming uh, an extension of the stimulus measures at the federal government level. Hmm. And whereas 
as I was suggesting earlier, we think very recently there's been a change in the political dynamic in Washington where the Republican leadership and the Congress has signaled that they want to make a deal with the president. So pending that realization of that deal, which could be within days, hmm. uh, we will probably raise our forecast maybe quite a bit. Hmm. Um, in that case, potentially the revision would take the, the growth rate up into the mid twos, maybe a little bit higher, which would be at least somewhat above trend. Hmm. Okay. So um, economy aside, how about the equity markets? Are you bullish or bearish in terms of 2012? Well, conditional on uh, our baseline forecast being realized, uh, we have, at least for the U.S., a, you know, a, a bullish forecast for stock, stock prices where um, we would be looking for the market to go up, possibly double-digit gains next year from the current position. Um, so, uh, so you do expect double-digit gains? We do from where we are right now, yes. Mm. But this is a conditional on resolving you know, the uncertainty in Europe, so you're taking the tail risk uh, if not out, at least diminishing a lot the concerns that Europe might go into a, a meltdown and take the global economy down with it. Um, that's going to be very positive for sentiment and presumably for asset prices. Um, and also, I, w I would say that's probably the most important thing that, that certainly needs to be removed in order to, to realize that kind of an outcome. And last question, what is the feel that you get from your clients and also from the investors around in this market um, about um, U.S. equities, especially in terms of sector, do they favor any sector? Do they favor any other specifics? Um, what, what do you say about that? Uh, I don't pick up so much uh, views about particular sectors in conversations with clients as just a general apprehensive about taking risk right now. Mm. And so as much as they are intrigued by, the, say, the U.S. story, um, there's a real reluctance to buy into its sustainability because of the uncertainty around Europe. And uh, I think many of the clients that I've talked to uh, are waiting to get a stronger signal that European officials are going to take decisive measures um, that would impress markets and um, give them more confidence that uh, the debt market's going to calm down before they would really want to plunge into uh, risk assets, especially equity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for the insightful information and the feedback.